Hey everyone, in this video I'm gonna go over everything you need to know about dragon riding and dragon racing. Let's get into it. First off, what is dragon riding? Dragon riding is a way of flying that is much more realistic because you have to deal with momentum. So for example, if you're on your dragon riding drake and you go down, then you're gonna get more momentum, more speed. But if you go up, you're gonna lose some and if you run out of momentum, well, you're just gonna hit the ground. You also have something called Vigor Points, so you can use your Vigor Points to use Dragon Riding abilities that allow you to go faster for a little while. But again, if you run out of Vigor Points, then you won't be able to use those abilities and you'll hit the ground. How can you unlock Dragon Riding? Unlocking Dragon Riding is very easy. All you need to do is be on a level 60 character and start the Dragonflight campaign. So you just need to go to Stormwind or Orgrimmar and then look for a quest that has this icon. And basically just follow this quest and any other quest that you see after that. It'll take you to the Dragon House, to the Waking Shores. And just keep following all the quests that have this specific icon. And eventually you'll unlock Dragon Riding at some point in the Waking Shores campaign. If you haven't done it yet, then make sure you go through the entire Dragonflight campaign so that you unlock all the Dragon Riding abilities. Once you've done that, you'll probably want to look into Dragon Riding talents. Dragon Riding talents can be acquired in exchange for Dragon Glyphs. Dragon Glyphs are like these gold coins that you can find all around the Dragon House, usually in quite high places or hard to reach places. And basically all you need to do is you need to go and find them all and just go through them with your Drake. And once you've collected enough Dragon Glyphs, then you'll be able to unlock the Dragon Riding talent. You can use the add-on Handy Notes Dragonflight to easily see where they all are on your map. But you can also just fly around and you will get a message in the chat whenever a Dragon Glyphs is near you. And you'll also get a special buff. It's very important to unlock as many Dragon Riding talents as you can. They are really important and they will really help you. For example, you'll get a lot more Vigor points and your Vigor will regenerate quicker. Once you've done all those things, you've unlocked Dragon Riding, collected all the Dragon Glyphs, then you're really ready to go for some Dragon Racing. You can start Dragon Racing anytime you want really, but having the Dragon Riding talents will make it so much easier. What are Dragon Races? Dragon Races are basically these little challenges where you need to go through a bunch of golden rings in a specific order with your dragon riding mount. And if you go fast enough, then you'll get the gold medal for that race. And eventually, if you get tons of gold medals, then you'll get rewards like achievements. I'll go over the rewards in a second. The easiest way to start dragon racing is by going to Selormu, which is an NPC in the Waking Shores, and he will give you the Waking Shores Tour quest. This quest will basically take you through all the dragon races in the Waking Shores Tour, and then you'll get a similar quest for all the other zones, and then that will allow you to unlock even more dragon races. There are quite a few different dragon races and a few difficulties as well. There are all the classic dragon races that are basically located in the dragon house so that's the four basic zones zaralek caverns forbidden reach and the upcoming emerald dream zone and so all of these dragon races have five different difficulties there's the normal difficulty which is like super easy you can easily get the gold timer for that one then there is the advanced one, which usually has like obstacles and stuff that makes it a bit harder. There's the reverse difficulty, which it's basically like the advanced one, but you go the other way around. So you start with the end and you end with the beginning of the race. And finally, the two last difficulties are the challenge advance and challenge reverse. They basically follow the same trajectory as the advanced and reverse, but you won't find any green orbs in those races. Usually in all the other difficulties, you'll find green orbs along the way that if you go through them, you'll get one free Vigor point, which is like super helpful. But in those challenge races, you won't find any, so it's a little bit harder. And then there are the temporary dragon races. So basically there are a few dragon racing events like the Kalimdor Cup or the Eastern Kingdoms Cup. And during those events, you'll get access to a ton of new dragon races that are located in the older zones. As of patch 10.2, we have only seen the 
Kalimdor Cup and the Eastern Kingdoms Cup so far. And for those events, they both lasted around two weeks. So usually you'll have enough time to go and go through all the different dragon races in these events. We don't know yet when the next dragon racing event is going to come, but you can just simply check on your in-game calendar and then just look for a Dragon Racing Cup. It has been confirmed that we are getting more Dragon Racing Cups, I believe in Novarend and maybe some other zones as well, but we don't know how often we are going to see them. So the Dragon Races from the Cups are temporary, but the Dragon Races from the Dragon Owls are accessible at all times. Now let's talk about the rewards. Most of the rewards are unlocked through achievements. You can get those achievements by getting the gold medal for one category of each race. So let's say you go and get the gold medal for all the advanced dragon races in the dragon house, then you'll get an achievement and a reward with that. There are quite a few titles that you can get, like Reverse Racer, Forbidden Reach Racer and stuff like that. There is one Shoulder Transmog, a Battle Pet and a few Dragon Riding Drake customizations. If you are a collector, there are quite a few achievement points to get through Dragon Racing, so it's definitely worth looking into it. Getting the Gold Medal for the Dragon Races from the different Cups, so that's the temporary events, will give you achievements, but it will also give you a currency called the Riders of Azeroth badge. And you can trade that currency in Stormwind or Orgrimmar for a transmog set and a few Drake customizations. There might be new rewards in the future, but for now, unfortunately, we don't have any mount rewards or any really like cool things, which I find kind of annoying considering that most of the other expansion features in the past have had much better rewards. But anyways, you're not really gonna get anything unless you can hit that gold timer. So here are five tips that are going to help you with every dragon race out there. First off, never use Whirling Surge. Whirling Surge is the ability that costs 3 Vigor Points, and the reason why you don't want to use it is because technically using your 3 Vigor Points on getting Forward Surge 3 times is actually going to give you a lot more momentum and freedom than if you used Whirling Surge. I got the Gold Timer on most of the Dragon Races that are currently in the game, and I've never had to use Whirling Surge once. The second tip is don't use Forward Surge when you're turning. The ideal way of using Forward Surge is using it when your Drake is directly aimed at the next ring. If you use it before that, then you'll be wasting a little bit of Vigor. In the hardest Dragon Races, every second counts. So anything that you can do to optimize your trajectory or, or really anything is going to be very helpful. The third tip is a very important one and it is that you need to learn the Skyward Ascent camera trick. So basically if you point your camera up slightly, use Skyward Ascent and then point your camera back down and all that you know fairly quickly, you'll get a lot more momentum than by using forward surge. Usually if you use Skyward Ascent you would be sent upwards but by using this camera trick all that momentum will just get you to go forward. So yeah this is actually like a really good trick. You can't do it all the time of course you usually need to have a ring that is at least slightly above you so that it works but when you can use it definitely use it because it will save you tons of momentum and it will make you go much faster. It takes a little bit of practice to master it, but it is definitely worth learning. The fourth tip is on how to deal with obstacles. Most of the time, any obstacle that you get stuck in, you're going to be able to avoid it by just practicing the race. But sometimes it's going to be very hard and you're going to get stuck a bunch of times. So what I would recommend is changing how you use your Vigor so that at that point in the Dragon Race, you have at least one Vigor point available to go around or above that obstacle. By just slightly spacing out the frequency of when you use your Vigor abilities, you can in the long term save one or two Vigor points and that can help you dodge any obstacle. 
The fifth and final tip is another strategy that is more situational but it will help you not get stuck and save time as well. When you have a dragon race with like a forest or just a part of a race where you can very easily get stuck at multiple times, what you want to do is for the first time that you go through the race try and go just very slowly and just try not to get stuck and then each time try to go slightly faster and if you get stuck don't go any faster just do it again until you don't get stuck anymore this is the best way that you can learn how to get through the hardest spot of dragon races and still go pretty fast if you want to see an example of this check out the video I made about the Booty Bay Blast Dragon Race. If you can master those 5 tips, you'll be able to handle most of the Dragon Races by yourself. But if you want to see more tips and tricks for Dragon Racing, I made another video about this and a written guide. Just use the links in the description if you want to see those. That's it for this video. If you have any questions about Dragon Riding or Dragon Racing, make sure to ask them in the comments and I'll see you next time.